Hi. Hi. How are, How are you? you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good too. So nice to have you. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. So, well, I'll just introduce everything. So, hi, <laughs> Tina, and I'm a member of Reso Revolution, which is a group of young people um, that aim to raise awareness about different social justice issues. And today I'm joined here with Morgan, and we're going to be talking about generational trauma and poverty. So could you start um, maybe by just introducing yourself, a bit about where you're from, your background, things like that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you so much again for having me. Um, so uh, my name is Morgan. Um, I am born and raised in Florida, specifically in ja uh, Jacksonville, which is the borderline between Florida and Georgia. Um, I live here now in Massachusetts. Um, I'm continuing school here, so I have no idea how long I'm going to be here, but it's going to be a long time. And uh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's great. So just to jump right in, how would you personally define generational trauma and how does it, what is its link with poverty? Yeah, yeah. So generational trauma is obviously a traumatic event or in a childhood occurrence or childhood events. Um, and it comes from many generations before you. So it's a same repeated cycle that happens to that individual. And it depends on that individual to understand it or to cope with it or to simply either pass that same, I guess you would say, discipline or learning skills to your children. Yeah. Yeah, I remember at one point learning about how your maternal grandmother's pregnancy can mm -hmm. affect you as a person just because of, you know, the life that she had. And that's just crazy to think that something so far back still has an effect on us today. And how, how does that tie in with poverty? Yeah, so it is a psychological event of trauma in your head. So um, within families, it is a wide exposure and a high risk of trauma. So this comes from like urban poverty. So people who don't have those basic essential resources, like people either coming from middle class or higher class. So these people who are high risk of this, they can be exposed towards neighborhood safety or racial discrimination and so much more. So this increased the likelihood of trauma within that individual and family. Yeah. And could you talk a bit about some personal experiences you've had with generational trauma and what it means to you and your life and your family? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I don't blame my family and how they raised me. Um, I raised by I was raised by a single parent. So, you know, knowing that she doesn't see a difference in how she raised me, even though I do, yeah. um, because it comes from, you know, the same cycle and it was repeating um, me understanding and I did, but it's basically relearning everything from reteaching yourself to the most basic things to the most, you know, advanced things. So it's yeah. repeating. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sound cut off for a second, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Just however. Re just repeat the last thing you said, because I think your sound cut out for a second. It did. I'm so sorry. No problem. Um, <laughs> so, you know, with my mother, um, you know, like I said, she doesn't understand um, how she raised me, and I, I don't blame her in that way. Yeah. Um, however, me identifying, realizing like the way she taught me wasn't the way of like parenting a child, uh, especially someone who goes through, I apologize, I have firefighters around me, <laughs> um, you know, coming from someone who has ADHD and ADD, so a certain special needs kid like me yeah. needs a certain way of living and, you know, educating and such as that and disciplined or structure. Um, basically you have to, I had to reprogram myself and relearn myself when I was, you know, now that I'm on my own, I realized going from therapy and reading, you know, professional books, realizing, okay, I was raised by an emotional, immature parent, but however, I don't blame her in that way. Yeah, It's just not the way that I want to carry that on with my kids if I do have kids. And that's not the way I want to, you know, live my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
I agree with what you say about not being able to blame them because I think as much as, you know, we can be angry at our parents, I think, you know, what you're saying is completely valid because to some extent, people are, people can never know the effects of the way they're raising their children. And especially in lower income communities, most people just don't have the resources to hear about like, you know, effective parenting techniques and things like mm-hmm. that. So, you know, generational cycles of like ways that children are traditionally raised. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, my mother, she was surrounded around, even I still do it, uh, surrounded by military and police officers. So they have a very specific structure to live by so Mm -hmm. having that very strict format in your life can very much bring a lot of you know issues and traumatic events yeah yeah how do you think that government policies perpetuate this cycle of generational poverty and general generational trauma yeah sorry i got like notes i'm like looking up and down so i apologize yeah um (laughs) um, simply you know by not giving them access and accessibility to the most basic essentials Mm -hmm. for, you know, people to go day by day in their lives. So, you know, that can come from, you know, having housing, shelter, food and water. But the most important part of this is definitely having access to healthcare. Yeah. Um, Healthcare is definitely the importance to it. Um, You know, having that people can, you know, go get help. Because, you know, generation trauma brings on a lot of mental health issues. So, you know, owning up to your mental health and going to get help with this easy accessibility in healthcare can really help someone cope with it and to stop, you know, generation traumas. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think education fits into that too? Like access to higher education? What, what do you think? Oh, no, I definitely do 100% believe mm-hmm. in education. You know, now... There's certain things, I'm not sure if you heard it, people are trying to like cut out history out of the education. So, you know, um, yeah, have, you know, learning about it in schools can definitely identify it in your personal life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so hopefully on a more positive note, what do you think, in your opinion, can be done to break cycles of generational trauma? And what do you plan on doing in the future if you ever have kids? And what generally do you think is the solution to this ongoing problem yeah you know the best simple way to do it is definitely holding and shouting out to those who should be held accountable that brings in you know this fear and unjust and injustice to people um also bringing simply awareness it doesn't matter how big your platform is you have a simple instagram tiktok etc and if you can really you know shout that out and you know it can eventually go out to the world eventually um you can also you know volunteer into you know nonprofit organizations to you know help out around yeah and more on a larger scale is there something that you think governments or larger organizations can do to change the system in order to break cycles of poverty and generational trauma that's a good question. Um, so definitely, you know, making, you know, new policies um, and, you know, exiting out those old policies. It's a very simple way um, that can give, you know, people who are going through, you know, urban poverty, poverty, low income, um, homelessness, uh, having that, you know, basic essential, you know, accessibility. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I feel like as much as, you know, everyone should do as much as they can, you know, I think real concrete change has to happen also on the government scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Else to add, I think, you know, that's it. I mean, it was good to hear, it was really great to hear your perspective and, you know, from to see that there is hope for the future and that, you know, there are people who are out there trying to break these cycles. That's really yeah. hope. Yeah. yeah. Thank well, you so much for having me. No problem. Bye. Bye-bye.